Basics of Capnography Introduction This module is intended to explain the basics of capnography. After viewing this module, you should be able to explain what capnography is, CO2 production, transport and elimination, capnography technology, normal capnogram and its phases, the key applications of capnography, the module takes approximately 20 minutes to complete. CO2 in human body Carbon dioxide, CO2, is a colorless gas. Its concentration in the air is about 0.04% by volume. All living cells in human body require energy to survive and carry out their physiological functions. The energy is generated by the metabolic process in the mitochondria of cells. This process consumes oxygen, O2, and nutrients, and produces bioenergy, CO2 and water. CO2 is therefore a normal byproduct of metabolism. As the process is continuous, O2 must be brought to the cells and CO2 removed continuously through respiration. Respiration is the process of transporting O2 from the ambient air to the cells and transporting CO2 from cells into the air. We will now take a closer look at how CO2 is removed in five consecutive steps. CO2 is produced by the cellular metabolism. CO2 diffuses into local capillaries and then the venous system. CO2 is transported in the blood to the lungs. CO2 diffuses from the capillary blood into the alveoli. CO2 is expired through lung ventilation. Accurate measurement of the CO2 concentration is an important for clinicians to understand the cellular metabolism, blood circulation, and ventilation. CO2 is commonly measured in three ways. Capnography continuously measures the CO2 concentration in respiratory gas. The results are shown graphically and numerically. Arterial blood gas analysis, ABG, measures the CO2 in arterial blood, that is, PaCO2. Transcutaneous CO2 monitoring measures the CO2 that diffuses through the skin, that is, TCPCO2. Capnography and ABGs are widely used in the emergency room, ICU, and operating theater. Capnography is also used in transport, general wards, procedural sedation and pain management. Transcutaneous CO2 monitoring is an approximation and is used primarily for neonatal applications and sleep labs. This module focuses on capnography. Capnography The air is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and inert gases. The two bars show these components in percent volume in the air and in normal expiratory gas. The clear differences are O2, 21% versus 15%, and CO2, almost 0% versus 6%. Nitrogen and inert gases are unchanged. With capnography, CO2 concentration in respiratory gases, during both inspiration and expiration, is continuously measured and recorded. Capnography has several terms that may be confusing. Capnography refers to the measurement of the CO2 concentration in respiratory gas. Capnograph refers to the device for capnography. Capnogram refers to the capnography results shown in a waveform. Capnometry refers to the result of capnography in numeric value, for example, ETCO2. The Working Principle Infrared absorption is the commonly used principle for capnography. It is based on the fact that CO2 molecules absorb infrared light energy of specific wavelengths, with the amount of energy absorbed being directly related to the CO2 concentration. When an infrared light beam is passed through a gas sample containing CO2, the electronic signal from a photodetector, which measures the remaining light energy, can be obtained. This signal is then compared to the energy of the infrared source, and calibrated to accurately reflect the CO2 concentration in the sample. To calibrate, the photodetector's response to a known concentration of CO2 is stored in the monitor's memory. Mainstream and Sidestream Capnography Mainstream and sidestream capnography are two basic configurations of CO2 monitors. The main difference is the location where the respiratory CO2 is measured. Mainstream capnography. With mainstream capnography, 
The respiratory CO2 is measured directly using a CO2 sensor and airway adapter, or cuvette, at the airway. The measurement is accurate and fast. Mainstream capnography is mainly used in intubated patients, from adults to neonates. The Capnostat 5 is an example of a mainstream capnography device. Sidestream capnography. With sidestream capnography, the respiratory CO2 is measured in a separate analysis chamber within the device. A sampling tube is used to continuously pump a small volume of gas from the airway into the chamber. The measurement is accurate with a tiny time delay. There is no sensor at the airway. Sidestream capnography is often used in non-intubated patients of all ages during procedural sedation, emergency transport, post-operative wake-up, or post-extubation when the patient requires monitoring of their ventilation status. The Philips Respironics Low Flow Sensor is an example of a sidestream capnography device. Capnography Results This chapter introduces three forms of capnography results. A. Capnogram, B, N-tidal carbon dioxide ETCO2, and C, CO2 trend display. Capnogram. Capnogram is the real-time CO2 waveform display breath by breath. Humans inhale the ambient air and exhale the stale gases from the lungs, resulting in a typical change in the CO2 concentration of respiratory gas. Here we show a pressure waveform and a CO2 waveform with the same time scale. You can see that pressure rises during inspiration, while CO2 rises during expiration. CO2 rise has a small yet clear delay. A normal capnogram over a breath cycle typically has five consecutive phases divided by five markers, A, B, C, D, and E. Phase 1, A to B, when expiration starts, the gas that first passes the CO2 sensor is coming from the conducting airways, so the CO2 is either very low or zero. Phase 2, B to C, the CO2 value rises rapidly because the gas from the anatomical dead space is replaced by CO2 rich alveolar gas. Phase 3, C to D, at late expiration, all of the gas that passes the CO2 sensor is alveolar gas, resulting in the alveolar plateau. Phase 4, D to E, when inspiration starts, the CO2 value drops rapidly to zero as CO2 free inspiratory gas passes the sensor. Phase 5, E to E, during inspiration, the CO2 value is normally zero. This is known as the respiratory baseline. Under pathological conditions due to abnormalities of metabolic, circulatory, and cardiopulmonary functions, the capnogram may show characteristic changes that are valuable for the diagnosis. Some typical examples will be provided at in Chapter 6. ETCO2 ETCO2 stands for N-tidal carbon dioxide, with the partial pressure of CO2 being abbreviated as PETCO2. ETCO2 is the highest CO2 value measured during a respiratory cycle, that is point D on the capnogram. The normal ETCO2 is about 30 to 43 millimeter mercury at sea level. CO2 trend. CO2 trend refers to a graphic display of ETCO2 and baseline values of many consecutive breaths over the last hour or hours. The trend clearly shows how the ETCO2 changed over the given period. In some cases, the CO2 trend curve is more interesting because both the real-time capnogram and ETCO2 represent a snapshot of one breath. We can use the trend to evaluate the patient's response to an intervention, such as drug therapy or changes to ventilator settings. What can affect the results of capnography? Capnographic results are influenced by six factors in two categories, physiological factors and equipment factors. Physiological factors. Factors that influence cellular metabolism and CO2 production, such as fever. Factors that influence CO2 transport, such as cardiac output and pulmonary perfusion. Factors that influence the alveolar ventilation perfusion ratio, such as shunt perfusion and dead space ventilation. Factors that influence lung ventilation, such as obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. Equipment factors. Additional instrumental dead space, circuit or airway occlusion or leak, or malfunctioning of the ventilator system, CO2 monitoring issues, 
These factors provide the guidance for troubleshooting in the event of abnormal capnography results. Clinical Applications of Capnography Capnography is widely used in intensive care medicine, anesthesiology, and emergency care. The following indications are based on the AARC Clinical Practice Guideline, Capnography Capnometry During Mechanical Ventilation. There are three broad categories of indications for capnography. Verification of Artificial Airway Placement Because of its reliability, specificity, and sensitivity, capnography is recommended to confirm correct placement of an endotracheal tube, to assess the quality of chest compressions and to indicate the return of spontaneous circulation during CPR, to indicate a ventilator disconnection or the miss or displacement of a tracheal tube, especially during patient transport. Assessment of pulmonary circulation and respiratory status. Capnography can assist in detecting changes in pulmonary circulation and respiratory status, monitoring the adequacy of pulmonary, systemic and coronary blood flow, screening for pulmonary embolism. Optimization of mechanical ventilation. Capnography during mechanical ventilation allows continuous monitoring of the functional status of the ventilator system. Evaluation of the efficiency of mechanical ventilation based on the difference between PaCO2 and the PETCO2, monitoring of the severity of pulmonary disease and evaluation of the response to the therapy, graphic evaluation of the ventilator patient interface, such as CO2 rebreathing. Note, in most cases, capnography is safe, non-invasive and accurate. However, the monitoring quality may be affected under the following conditions. A very high breathing frequency if exceeding the capnography response time, especially in the case of side stream capnography, contamination of the monitor or sampling cell from secretion or condensate, low cardiac output or poor pulmonary blood flow, administration of sodium bicarbonate, gas leak in the circuit, or around the tracheal tube cuff or mask, bronchopleural fistula, extracorporeal life support. A few typical capnogram. This chapter presents a few typical capnogram. Familiarize yourself. The capnogram were taken from the capnography reference handbook of Phillips with permission. Normal capnogram and trend. A normal capnogram indicates correct tracheal tube placement as well as proper ventilation. Increasing ETCO2. The possible causes include hypoventilation, increased metabolic rate and rapid rise in body temperature. Decreasing ETCO2. The possible causes include hyperventilation, decreased metabolic rate and fall in body temperature. Rebreathing. The possible causes include faulty expiratory valve, inadequate inspiratory flow, malfunction of a CO2 absorber system, partial rebreathing circuits, and insufficient expiratory time. Obstruction in breathing circuit or airway. The possible causes include obstruction in the expiratory limb of the breathing circuit, presence of a foreign body in the upper airway, partial kinked or occluded artificial airway and bronchospasm. Curare cleft. It is a dip in the plateau, indicating a spontaneous breathing effort during mechanical ventilation. It can also result from surgical manipulations in abdomen. Endotracheal tube in the esophagus. If the ET tube is placed in the esophagus, either no CO2 is sensed or only small transient waveforms is present. Leak around ET tube. The downward slope of the plateau blends in with the descending limb. Possible causes, a leaky or deflated endotracheal or tracheostomy cuff, and an artificial airway that is too small for the patient. Fault ventilator expiratory valve. Waveform evaluation, baseline elevated. Abnormal descending limb of capnogram, N, allows patient to rebreathe exhaled gas. Two more points. Capnography versus pulse oximetry. Both capnography and pulse oximetry are common techniques for continuous non-invasive patient monitoring in a similar clinical environment. What are the differences between the two? Can they replace one another? Capnography measures the CO2 concentration in the respiratory gases and the breathing frequency. The results reflect the status of CO2 production, transport, perfusion, and elimination. 
Pulse oximetry measures the oxygen saturation of capillary blood in the local tissue. The saturation means how many percent of hemoglobin of the capillary blood is oxygen bound. It also measures the pulse. The results reflect the status of oxygenation. When a sudden change in respiration occurs, such as apnea, capnography detects it immediately, while the consequent deoxygenation detected by pulse oximetry occurs one or two minutes later. Therefore, Capnography and pulse oximetry measure different things and have different clinical meanings. Both monitoring techniques should be applied together to safeguard the patients and obtain the full clinical picture. PaCO2, ETCO2 gradient. The difference between PaCO2 and ETCO2 is termed as PaCO2, ETCO2 gradient. In a healthy person breathing room air, ETCO2 is between 2 and 5 mm mercury lower than PaCO2. In the case of abnormal ventilation perfusion ratio, the PaCO2, ETCO2 gradient increases. This occurs in the case of lung heterogeneity such as COPD and ARDS condition, or in case of decrease of the lung perfusion such as shock or pulmonary embolism. Conclusions in this module, you have learned the basics of capnography, including CO2 production, transport and elimination, the definition, working principle, equipment, results and some key clinical applications of capnography. You also know the five phases of a normal capnogram. This knowledge sets a solid basis for clinicians to understand and apply capnography in daily practice. Thank you for choosing Hamilton Medical College, Hamilton Medical's free and open e-learning service.